Hi, Daniel here with Live Pixel Create. Um, I want to show you guys how you install the material sensor, the actuator, or the prof that will be touching the material on the movement uh, for the auto focus. So, first things first is going to be coming with this plastic uh, shape. Uh, this is the part where the, the material alignment will go, like so. And this lip here is for the edge of the module so here's the front of your module you will be flat you can do it in the either direction let's do it here so what you want to know first is where is your lower part what is the lowest that you can be so once you set this in this case i have the module with a shield so you can put any kind of material that will lay flat in this you just make sure that it's flat in there to know where is your lowest point of contact so we can install this like this just put it there we're going to use a little bit of tape in this case to show you how you secure this for the installation so i'm going to put a little bit of tape here on this plastic so you see the tape is here so what you want to do is this is going to be nice and square you want to hold the bottom part that is on the lowest point of contact and you want to push this down until the actuator goes in you will see a movement there is a little movement in this you will see it there again and that is where you want to fix this because when you remove your material that means the actuator is just a millimeter below the point of contact that is going to be the best position for your sensor it's going to leave you still uh, enough clearance so you don't hit anything while you're engraving or moving around uh, with your laser and in that way you also ensure with this that it's a square completely aligned and a square with your unit you can do the same let's remove it into another laser you can do it with a 20 watt if you don't have a shield your lower point of contact will be the air assist if you're using Kobe's air assist will be the same concept in this case you don't have our air assist or a shield so let me put this one on front for now here and I'm gonna put it right by the laser you're not gonna scrape anything the laser is inside so I'm gonna do it like this the actuator and I'm gonna give it a little bit of room just for fun and that will be the best for my infrared to give me enough clearance so that's it uh, super easy to install super easy to change from one module to another we have a quick release cable so you can have multiple sensors with multiple modules you can buy the sensors by itself on the website um that way you don't need to worry about to remove it from one module and try to glue it to another one we included a uh, alcohol pad so you can clean up your module very well before you install this to ensure uh, the best adhesion and it's really simple really straightforward Okay, we're going to be installing the cables on the Devil 1 and I'm going to tell you what cable goes where right now. So what you're seeing right now, I have the Devil 1, the proof of concept. So number one, we're going to make sure that we unplug it. We don't want anything running, so you will notice that there's no lights on. So there's a couple things to see. Number one, we have here this one here in this case turn it this one here it says Z motor so on the Z motor you want to use the cable that has this terminal in one end the fl long flat one and this other terminal the color can be green color can be white uh, that varies but that's what you want to install in there so things to notice is 
please be aware those little two guides goes right into the little holes there's a little lines in here don't force it it's important to not force the cables in okay so I'm going to connect this cable here right now let's put it in there and I'm gonna push it once I know it's completely in the right position I don't want to bend pins or nothing similar there we go so we have the motor installed which is this cable I'm gonna put it on the side now we are going to install the prop or the sensor the material sensor you will notice the material sensor one end is like this which is the quick release so we can switch to another modules with the sensor and no need to rewire everything so what we want to do here is we want to use on the main board here the one that say prof okay same concept please be aware of the two pins to be in the right spot and connect the cable and once it's installed there it's done with the devil we don't need to do anything else in the machine the machine is set now we can do two things we can reroute all these cables in my case i will route it later uh, through the drag chain because i have a drag chain kit installed uh, or you can just put it around your frame it will come with a couple clips so you can put it around your frame uh, to keep the cable management nice and clean so now let's install the C axis on our D1 okay so we have our module this is a 10 watt and I'm using Kobe air assist here and the sensor is being previously installed like in the with the same method we saw before so things that we are going to do we have our c-axis and we have here the two cables that goes for the c-axis so we're going to install first you know our c-axis down it should be a nice and a snug. Let's take this screw a little off. There we go. I'm going to do it a little bit more down. There. I'm going to do it there. So I have enough clearance on the bottom here. See? So the reason this is nice and snug is because there's some extra weight. And not only because the motor, but we put in the, the the laser in front. So we don't want this to be, you know, loose. So it's a nice and snug fit. Um, we have a lot of trouble now. It's going to be all the way from the original position. There is this. And it will take us down a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way down first. <sighs> And I'm going to make sure that where I'm going to be stopping is the best height I'm going to be using for what I have in my table. So maybe I need to go just a little bit lower, just a little bit if needed. So I'm going to move this, unscrew the back, and again push my c-axis down just a little bit I'm gonna tighten this up there it is nice and snug in that way when I have a material let's say I'm gonna cut this piece of acrylic you know let's put it in there I can see that before anything else what it touch my material is my proof 
and no other element. So once I have this there, all I have to do now is number one, connect my motor. Same thing, pay attention to the cable direction. So I'm gonna connect the motor. There it is. And I'm also going to connect the limit. And there it is. So as right now I'm gonna put this up here so they don't interfere with anything. And for your module, you just connect your module like you will do in any other regular situation. Okay, so now we have Lightburn open here and our Devil One already boots up. Everything is connected and we connect the cables for the prop on the material sensor and we connect the cable for the stepper motor so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna check for console if you don't have console open you can always go to window console so once console is open you want to see down here right beneath then you where you type the comments uh, macros so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select one in this case I install my uh, material sensor on a 10 watt laser see this is my 10 watt uh, module so now we're gonna add here we're gonna copy and paste the code that is on the website and you will see in the product page there is this information uh, the first line will give us uh, move the stepper that is connected on Z, move it down, goes negative uh, 300, F is the speed. So the speed is going to be variable, depends on how your machine is configured and things like that. I recommend always start with 100 to make sure what is the speed that is moving. If it's moving too fast, go with 50, it's moving too slow, go with 200, 300, 400, so on and so forth. The second line is telling that is looking for the prof to make contact. So basically, once make a contract, then go back to the stepper. And in this case, I have it to I have it set for go back 35 millimeters, you know, or 35 steps uh, uh, at this speed. I want to say the speed of the line 900 a little bit faster, and I hit OK. Once we do that, what we need to do is put a material under and since we are already sure that we reach, you know, enough, I'm going to click my 10 watt. So that will move my laser down, my laser up, and I can prove here the little foot on the side, the manual focus already to see how it's working. Uh, if this is in the place that I want it, I don't need to do much. So I want to change my names here. Focus at 10 watt. Uh, in in that way, it's a little bit easier. So you have a 20 watt, and you put the, the sensor on the side as well. You repeat the operation here. Create one that is for the 20 watt. Another one in here on the macro number two. I don't want for the infrared. Now, things to understand is these numbers for the speed is going to be different on each machine. My machine is configured in, my, in millimeters per second. If you have it in millimeters per minute, it will be different numbers. So always start low and go up from there so nothing breaks. And at the same time, the distance that goes back once the material is reached can be different can be 30 can be 20 can be 38 instead 35 this is per case uh, as well everyone is going to have this as a different number it's just a matter of calibrations once you calibrate it you don't need to do it again 
until you need to replace the material sensor or change it or something like that. Other than that, you are set to go and you should be able to focus over anything that you throw at your machine. Also remember, you have on the move section, if you don't know where that is, Windows uh, move, right? So you will have your buttons for homing and all the stuff as a regular and now the arrows actually works. So the distance affects for both, for movement and for the height. So if you wanna move distance of whatever, 50 millimeters up, the speed is divided in two. One is the speed for movement and the other one is the speed for your C axis. So set your speed, set the distance. Okay, once that happened, you can move up or you can move down according to your needs. Another thing that you are going to have now that you didn't have before is when you create an element and you have two clicks here, uh, you have the number of passes. Now you have a number of passes that you can increase to three and you can say how many passes uh, are, or how many millimeters is going to create an offset on the Z. So the C step per pass in millimeters is how much is going to be going in and out. You can do the same here. Negative is out, positive is in, same here, you know. So a step per passes. So in one pass is how many steps is going to go down and how many steps is going to go up. And that will allow you to do deeper engraving and of course cut thicker materials. Just play with these options, find your sweet spot for different cases and different materials and you are good to go.